Hey everybody, uh, real quick before we jump into the message, I, I just want to again say thank you for your generosity. Um, your, your giving, your generosity just continues to um, amaze me and it just kind of blow my mind that you truly do know how to excel in the grace of giving. So thank you very much. Um, if you'd like to give during this time to help us to meet needs and, and uh, to be prepared for the future, um, you can always give over at corinth.cc, click the give button, um, or you can mail your checks in uh, to the church office and uh, there are people here throughout the week um, who are able to receive those. So thank you so much for your giving. I'm gonna pray and uh, we'll do some preaching uh, this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for being a good God who uh, continues to provide, and I thank you for uh, your church here at Corinth and the way that they continue to uh, trust you to give and to be generous in this season. And uh, God, uh, we're asking now that as we uh, turn our attention to your scriptures, would you please give us ears to hear what the Spirit would have us to hear today? And uh, would you help us to connect, even though I'm on this side of the camera and, and uh, they're on that side of the com uh, camera, let us connect one-to-one -one, uh, today. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam, and I'm the senior minister here at Corinth Christian Church. Uh, thanks for tuning in and watching us today. Um, if you happen to be watching us on Facebook, we'd love to invite you to like and share this video so your friends will uh, be able to watch as well. Um, if you are watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Church Online, I want to invite you to jump over to the comments section right now and just tell everybody hello and who is watching and who's watching uh, with you, okay? Um, if you are a uh, guest, if this is the first time you've ever uh, clicked over and watched us for a little bit, uh, we wanna say thank you. Thank you so much uh, for, for clicking the play button. And um, I, I want you to know, we would love a chance to connect with you. And so I wanna invite you to corinth.cc and I just click that I'm new card and fill that real quick form out so that we can connect with you. We wanna know how we can be praying for you and serving you um, during these crazy, uh, crazy days. Well, um, last week we started a, a brand new series that we're calling Anxious for Nothing, Anxious for No Thing, if you will, and it, it comes from the title of a book by Max Lucado. So if you are in the midst of this quarantine, you're looking for something to read, I highly recommend uh, that book. It's a great, great book. Um, but So what we're talking about is anxiety, okay? Uh, we're talking about that because these are you know, kind of anxiety-filled days. I mean, here we are. It's, it's week six, I believe, of shelter in place. And so we've all just kind of gotten used to this new rhythm of just kind of staying home, not going out. And then this past week, um, our governor announced that he was going to start, you know, slowly reopening the state. And so you know what that did? After we'd all gotten used to this shelter in place kind of thing, you know what it did? Is it caused anxiety, right? Because now it's like, oh, is he doing it too soon? I mean, what's going on? You know, should I go out? Should I reopen my business? You know, if I go out, am I going to get sick? What does this all mean? And so all those feelings just kind of started, you know, to just well back up. See, it's easy in these days to feel anxious. It's easy during these days to feel a little overwhelmed. It's easy during these days to feel a little bit of, of pressure on us. It's easy to feel uncertain, not knowing what's coming around the corner. It's easy during these days for us to feel a little discouraged. It's easy for us during these days to maybe be lacking in empathy, right? Maybe a little bit more irritable than what we have been in the past. You see, the reason we feel anxious is because these are anxious days. And so we're, we're talking about that. We're like, well, how do we deal with this? How, how do we deal with this in a way that, that brings honor and glory to God? How, how does God want us to deal with this? And so um, we're, we're spending three weeks looking at one passage of Scripture. It's found in uh, Philippians chapter 4, just five verses from it. So one passage, five verses, three weeks. And we're looking at it and saying, so what is God's prescription for our anxiety? And last week we said the first prescription is this. It's, it's praise. It's celebration. That, that we want to celebrate God's providence, that he is in control, that this hasn't caught him off guard, and, and, and that he has it all in his grip. We want to celebrate his, his mercy, that he has forgiven us of his sins, and we want to turn our attitude away from the negativity, and we want to turn it towards 
praise, celebration. And we said this, that, that God calms our fears not by removing our problems, but by revealing his presence. So we celebrate his presence. Uh, if you missed last week, I'd invite you to you know, jump back and, and to catch up there. Uh, this week, second prescription uh, for our anxiety is very simple. God's prescription for anxiety is prayer, okay? That he wants us to pray to him. So last week, we, we, we said this, and I'm gonna try to say this next week as well, but I just wanna make sure we're clear up here at the front. Feeling anxious is not a sin. It's not, not a sin, it's an emotion. It can lead to sinful behavior, but it's not a sin. So whenever you start to feel anxious, here's how I want you to view it. I want you to view it as a warning light. Okay, like, you know, on your car, you've got these lights that can pop up whenever something's going on that needs to be paid attention to. Um, just like today, whenever we were driving in to film this sermon, um, I had a light show up on my dashboard in my car, and it was the low fuel warning. I'm about out of gas because I haven't put gas in my car for six weeks because there's nowhere to go. And so that light showed up and it said, hey, you, you're running low on fuel. Don't forget to fill up soon or you'll end up stranded on the side of a road. And so what does that tell me? Well, within the, the next two weeks, I'm gonna need to put gas in my car because I've only got 40 miles left in the tank, okay? So that's what it is. It's a warning light just saying, hey, you need to pay attention to this. And I'm telling you, that's what anxiety is in you. Whenever you start to feel anxious, here's what I want you to do. I want you to see that as a warning light on your own personal dashboard that is saying, hey, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to talk to our Heavenly Father about what it is that I'm feeling right now. In fact, this is how Paul puts it in Philippians chapter four. Let's read the whole passage. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about, and let's, let's all say this together on the couch, in bed, wherever you're watching. Don't be anxious about what? About anything, right? But in, say it with me, in every situation, Every situation, so what's he talking about? It's like, well, if you are homeschooling your kids and not for sure what to do, if, if you are wondering about whether or not you should open up your business, if you are wondering how to protect the most vulnerable in your family, how am I gonna make it you know, until the next paycheck? You know, All these things, I'm afraid if I go out, I'm gonna get sick in every situation. He says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And then listen what happens. And then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, I wanna camp out here for just a second because I wanna highlight just a couple of things for you. First thing is there, Paul uses three different words or phrases to describe prayer. And they are similar, but they're not identical. He says, he uses prayer and petition and present requests. So, so prayer is just that idea of just general devotion, general worship, just talking to God. Um, petition means that whenever we pray, we go with humility because we don't go to the, the God of the universe demanding that he acts, but we go in humility. And then present requests is just what it sounds like. It's, it's what you're asking for. But in all of that, in, in prayer and petition and presenting requests, there's a, there's a qualifier there. He says, with thanksgiving, that we want to go with an attitude of gratitude, that we want to count our blessings, not our problems, and we want to focus more on what we have more than what we don't have. So whenever we pray, that's how we pray. We, we pray, we petition, we present requests with thanksgiving. He says, be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, pray. See, Paul's trying to help us to see this. 
that if it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. If it's big enough for you to be worrying about, it's something that is consequential enough that you need to be praying about it. But then Paul's making us a promise. And the promise is very simple. It says this, if it's on your mind, it's on God's heart. If it's on your mind, if it's on your heart, if it's weighing you down, then it is something that is on God's heart. And how do we know that? Well, it's in verse five. He says, the Lord is near. God is near. Isn't that something good to hear that the Lord is near? In fact, I want somebody to jump over into the comments right now. Facebook, Church Online, YouTube. Somebody jump in the comments and just say this. He is near. He, he is near because that, that's important for us to remember. He is near. That, that God is not off in the distance just kind of just left us to our own devices and just trying to figure it all out on our own. He, he has not left you. He is near because you see, if you buy into the lie that God isn't near, that he is distant, and that he does not care, it is not going to relieve you of your anxiety, it is going to multiply your anxiety. Because see, it is one thing to face a challenge on your own. It's an entirely different thing to face it when you have somebody there with you. And the promise is this, is that he is with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He is present. He is near. I love Psalm 118. It just says this, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. He's with you. So do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, pray. Now, I'm, I'm sure that you're sitting there, and you're, you're sitting there going, well, well preacher, um, duh. Okay, you, you know, I, I understand that I should be praying about it. You know, one of the things that I've learned in, in my years of being a pastor is just telling people, hey, you need to pray about that um, doesn't necessarily help. It's not the most helpful thing to just say because what I've found is that a lot of people don't know how to pray. And they're, they're, they're really concerned. They're, they're intimidated by prayer because like, well, what are, what are the rules? I mean, how do I open it up? I mean, what do I call God? Do I address him as almighty, omnipotent creator God? Do I, do I go the other direction? Do I just call him, hey, dad, you know, or daddy? What, what, do, I, what do I call him? And, you know, how do I talk to him? I mean, is it like, do I have to use like this super formal, you know, King James kind of language? You know, hearken unto the voice of my cry, oh God. You know, hide not thyself from my supplication. You know, do I have to talk like that or can I just talk normal? You know? And how do I wrap it up? Do I pray in Jesus' name? Do I have to say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit? Do I need to cross myself? You know, what, what do I need to do? And, and then we worry. It's like if I get those things wrong, is God going like, to take me and put me in like, you know, prayer time out and put me in the corner and be like, no, I'm not going to listen to you until you learn how to talk correctly, right? And, and then to make matters worse, have you ever been around you know, somebody who has like the spiritual gift of prayer? You know, maybe in your small group or Sunday school class and, you, you know, they, they pray and they get called on to pray and they start praying and by the time that they get done, you know, the Pope's in the corner and he's crying his eyes out and you can just imagine that God and all of his angels in heaven are looking down and they're elbowing each other going, dude, that was, that was something right there. You know, that was good. You know, and then, they, and then they come to you and they're like, all right, I, your turn to pray. Will you pray? And you're like, well, I, I guess so, and so you're like, all right, let, let, let's pray, y'all, and it's like, you know, God, you're so, you're so good, you're, you're, you're so good, God, you're good, you're, you are, uh, you are like a good neighbor, God, you're so good, you're good to the, to the last drop, God, you're so, you're so good, day by day, you're good, daily, you're good, these things we pray, day by day, by, by, by day, we pray, Amen. And then you just kind of peek around and you're like, I hope nobody heard that because that was terrible, man. You know, it's like, and so we're just intimidated by prayer. And so it can scare us. And so if that's you watching today, uh, let, let me try and help you. All right. Listen to me. God loves you. And God loves to hear your voice. He wants to hear from you. And he wants to hear your voice talking in your own way. So how do we pray? Let me give you just a couple of tips today. First thing would be this. Just when you pray, ask boldly, 
Ask boldly for what you need. Talk to him in your own way. Paul says, present your requests to God. Present your requests to God. Uh, Literally what he's saying is let your needs be known. So how do you let your needs be known to God? Well, let's not overcomplicate it. You, you let your needs be known. So you, you talk to him in, in your own way. You talk to him in, in your, your voice. You talk to him in your way, not in, in my way. You speak to him from your heart. It doesn't have to have a specific formula. There's not a certain secret prayer language that you have to use. You just talk to him in your own way way. Talk to your heavenly father. Talk to him. Approach him. You know, oh, we, we have two kids. Um, AJ is our oldest. Uh, he will be graduating here in a few weeks. Uh, we, we hope it's in a few weeks, you know. Um, then Jaden is our youngest. She's uh, 16. And it, it, it intrigues me that, you know, both my kids, they, whenever they need something, they come to me, they come to their, their dad in entirely different ways. They, they really do. AJ, um, he is bold. Okay, he is bold. He is not afraid to ask for anything. It doesn't matter how big, how expensive, how grand, or anything like that. He is bold, and he is persistent. I, I tell you, it's like he just thinks that he's going to be able to wear us down and just ask and ask and ask. So it's bold. It's persistent. Uh, normally, whenever AJ asks for something, um, he texts it to me um, one time or 37 times in five minutes, you know, and because he's bold and persistent. Have, have I mentioned that yet? Okay, but that's just how it is. He's direct. He's to the point. Now, our, our daughter, Jaden, uh, she, she's very different. Um, she really doesn't ask for a lot of stuff, and sometimes it feels like we just kind of have to, to drag it out of her, but whenever she does ask for something, it, it, it's completely different than, than, than AJ. Um, it's generally not through a text. It's generally through a conversation, and she'll approach, and, and she'll be like, you know, I was kind of thinking, and I was wondering, what would it be like? And it's just a completely different approach. It's, it's a conversation that, that takes place there. I, I, two kids both come to their dad, both come to their parents in, in their own ways, and that's how they approach us. So how you talk to God, how you talk to your heavenly Father can be done in your own way. Some of y'all, you're going to be just that out loud, just kind of person. You're going to just be talking to God, and you're going to ask him for what it is that's going on. Others of you, maybe it's, it's writing your prayers out, whether it's, you know, using a pen or whether it's using, you know, a screen, whatever it is, you're going to write your prayers out to God. Sometimes others of you, your prayers are just going to be the sighs that are there as you just sigh and you feel the weight that is there. You're going to be praying to him. Other times, others of you, you're going to be singing out prayers. There's going to be a song that you're listening to, and like, man, this is my prayer, and you're going to sing it out to God. Others of you, you're going to be shouting for joy about the greatness that is taking place. Others of you, you're going to be shouting in anger about what you're feeling right now. And here's the deal. God can take all of it, and he is waiting to hear from all of us in our own way. Because here's the deal. I'm an, as an earthly dad, listen, and this is just a secret between you and me, all right? Don't let this get out because I don't know that I want my kids to find this out. But here's the deal. I love it when my kids come to me and ask me for help. I love it whenever my kids present their requests and their needs to me because I love helping them. That's what I love to do. I love being needed by them. I love it. And so I love it when my kids present their requests to me. And if me, as an imperfect earthly dad who has all kinds of flaws, all kinds of faults, if I love it whenever my kids come to me and ask for things, how much more then will our heavenly Father, who is perfect in all of his ways, how much more then will he love to hear from his children on earth? Oh, I tell you this. Listen, God loves the sound of your voice. Present your requests to him. He loves to hear from you. So what is it that you need? Ask him for it. You know, maybe this week you're having a a really important meeting at work because you're, you're trying to figure out, you know, whether or not to reopen, should you reopen, how it all works. And you don't know exactly what needs to be done right now. Why don't you ask your heavenly father for help? And why don't you tell him, God, hey, we, we, you know, we've got this great, big, important meeting coming up on Tuesday, 10 o'clock. 
And God, I don't have a clue what needs to go. I don't know what path we need to follow. I don't know what we need to do. I don't know what the wise thing is right now. God, would you please give me wisdom? Would you please give me discernment? Maybe you've got a really difficult conversation that needs to take place. Maybe it's with somebody you live with. Maybe it's with somebody you work with. But you've got that difficult conversation and you're not quite for sure how it needs to go. Would you just say, God, you know I'm gonna be talking with them on Wednesday and I don't know what to say, so God, can you help me? Would you please command me what to speak and how to say it? And would you speak through me? Would you, would you uh, put your voice through my voice box on Wednesday? What is it that you need? God wants you to ask him. Ask boldly. Present your requests to him. The second thing I would tell you this is to pray continually. Don't stop. Remain engaged in a conversation with your heavenly father. Apostle Paul says in another place in 1 Thessalonians 5, he says this, rejoice always. Pray, say it with me, pray continually, right? Continually, don't stop. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's his will for you that you would rejoice always that you would give thanks in all circumstances, but also, too, that you would pray continually. Now, now how do we do that? It means that everything that comes up in your life include God in the conversation. Everything that comes up, every joy-filled moment, every internal argument that you're having with yourself, every emotion that catches you by surprise, every circumstance, every anxious thought that you feel. Include him in the conversation. Talk to God about everything. And the reason that this is so important is this, is that prayer is how we tell God, I love you enough to trust you in this moment. I love the story about the ethicist John Kavanaugh. Now, this isn't Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh. This is a different guy. But so many many years ago, he um, went to spend three months in Calcutta with Mother Teresa in India. And he went there because he was trying to figure out how does he need to spend the rest of his life. So on that very first morning, he had a conversation with Mother Teresa, and she asked him, John, what is it that I can do for you? And he said, well, I I would love for you to pray for me. She said, okay, that'd be great. Uh, What would you like me to pray for? And he said, would you pray, would you pray that I have clarity? She looked at him and thought for a moment, and then she said, no, no, I I won't do that. And he said, well, why? And she said, John, clarity is the last thing you are clinging to and must let go of. And he said, well, (laughs) you always seem to have clarity. You, you seem to have the clarity that I'm looking for. That, that's all I'm asking for. And she laughed. She goes, no, John, I have never had clarity. What I have always had is trust. So I will pray that you will trust God. Don't you love that? That it's not about clarity. It's about trust. See, too often, we wait for God, we wait for Jesus to give us clarity. Make things clear, make paths straight, open every door and the windows and the shades, open it up, make it as crystal clear as it possibly can. We wait for God, we wait for Jesus to give us clarity while Jesus, while our Heavenly Father is waiting for us to trust Him. Because you see, it's whenever we trust him that we begin to sing things clearly it is through trust that we open ourselves up to his peace i wonder how would your life look how different would your life look if you were truly confident that god was worthy of your trust He wants you to trust him. He wants you to seek him. And he wants you to trust him with your troubles. 
love how the Apostle Peter puts it. First Peter chapter 5, he says this, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Cast it all. In other words, throw it to him, surrender it to him, leave it with him because he cares for you. The way I kind of picture this is like whenever you take your car keys and you toss them to somebody else and you hand them over to somebody else, you're you're saying, I'm going to let you drive my car. I'm going to sit in the passenger seat or I'm going to sit in the back seat and I'm going to let you drive and I'm going to let you drive the whole way. In 12 minutes, I'm not going to stop and say, "Uh -uh 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 -uh." no, 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 you're driving the wrong way. Pull over. Let me take it back. That's what Peter is saying we need to do with our anxieties. We we cast them to him and we, we trust him with them and we don't try and pull them back. No, he cares for us. So we throw to him, we surrender to him all of our anxieties because he loves us so much. So listen to me, what is it that you are anxious about right now in this moment? Are you anxious about your kids? Are you worried about how they're doing emotionally, spiritually, physically? Cast it on to him. Are you worried about and anxious about your aging parents and, and their safety and, and how you know, to take care of them best whenever you can't be around them? Cast your anxiety upon them. Are you worried about your marriage? Because the, the stress of being in the same four walls for six straight weeks has started to you know, reveal some cracks. Cast your anxieties upon him. Whatever it is that you are anxious about, at your home, at work, your finances, throw your anxieties to him. Cast them to him because he cares for you. Cast your anxieties upon him. See, our job is very simple. We pray and then we let God worry about it. We trust him. So ask God boldly. How do we pray? We, we ask him for what it is that we need. We ask boldly. We let our needs be known. And we we pray continually. We engage with him in a conversation continually. We we don't stop. We involve him in everything that's going on in our lives. And then we trust him, knowing that he cares for us. It's in in the book, The Dance of Hope, that Bill Fry remembers the day that he tried to pull a stump out of the ground here in Georgia. He was 11 years old at the time, and this was just one of his jobs in the house, you know, one of his chores was getting the firewood for the small little stove in the house. And so he says, one day I I found a large stump in an open field near the house, and I went out and I tried to, to pull it out. He's like, and I pushed and I pulled and I crowbarred for hours, but the root system in this stump was just too deep and it wouldn't let, let go. And I couldn't pull it out of the ground. He's like, I was still struggling with it whenever my dad came home from work. And dad saw me, he says, and, and he saw me out there working. And so he came by and he just stood there and, and he watched. And then he said, my dad said to me, I think I see the problem. And I said, well, what's that? He said, my dad said, well, you're not using all your strength. He's like, I just exploded onto him. He was like, did you realize how long I've been working, how hard I've been working? And and he said, dad said, no, 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 listen. You're not using all your strength. So whenever I had finally cooled down, I I asked him, I was like, well, dad, what, what, what do you mean? He said, you're not using all your strength. You haven't asked me to help you yet. See, I, I wonder how many of us in these anxiety-filled days are out in the field and we're pulling and we're pushing and we're crowbarring on that stump of anxiety, that problem that we have. And it's not going anywhere because the problem's deep. And I wonder how many of us are out there struggling on our own, in our own strength, while our Heavenly Father stands there and says, are you going to ask me for help? Are you going to ask for my strength? Because listen, that the problems that you're facing, they're real problems. No one is denying that. And they're big problems. We're not pretending that they're not. But you don't have to face it on your own. 
You don't have to face the problem alone. Your Father is there. And He wants you to lean in and to use His strength and not just your own. Ask Him for help. Will He answer? Absolutely. Will He remove your problem immediately? Maybe. But maybe, maybe what God is doing in this moment is trying to give each and every one of us a PhD in patience. And he's trying to teach us that. But whatever it is, you can be sure of this. This prescription for your anxiety is prayer. It is going to your heavenly Father being bold and asking for what you need and to continually involve him in that conversation and to trust, to trust that he will use his power for your good. Bottom line this morning is this, is when we give God our anxiety, he gives us his peace. So present your requests to him. Pray to your heavenly father. He is near, and he loves you, and he loves to hear the sound of your voice. You know, today there might be something that you are wrestling with, and it's a heavy weight, and you've been praying about it, or you're deciding now that you're going to pray about it. Here's what I want to offer you. We want to come alongside of you and pray with you so that you're not having to pray alone. So if that's you, and if there's something that is weighing on you and you just want us to be praying alongside of you, uh, would you please do this? Would you text the word prayer to the number here on the screen? And let us know what it is that we can be praying about, and I promise you, we will come alongside of you and join you in praying to our Heavenly Father that He would give you His peace. In fact, let me pray for you right now. God, that is our prayer that we would hand over all these anxieties, all these worries, all these fears that we are wrestling with right now, that we would cast them to you because we know that you care for us. And we're asking that you would give us your peace. And so God, for those who are watching right now in this moment and they feel overwhelmed, they feel anxious, they feel burdened, would they hear this? Oh God, would you give them your peace? Would you release their anxieties? And would you affirm to them your love and your presence? And we know that you love us because Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. He was buried in the ground and three days later, he was alive. So we know that it is true that you are near and that you care. Thank you for that. And we pray that all in the name of Jesus. Amen.